All right, welcome to Fab League Season 2, Week 1. We are the Card Guys, and we are playing against Fab Foundry this week. Um, do you know Nathan's opponent's name, John? Sam Yen. Oh, this is Sam. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got Sam Yen against uh, Nathan Crawford here. We got a Viscerai versus Starbo. Pretty typical of uh, this format right now. But uh, in the in the league... Everybody has to play a different deck on the same team. So you will see five players versus five players. And there will be five different decks on each team. So um, you will get some variety uh, in this league. It won't be the same old, same old over and over again. So stick around because I think we have four matches um, tonight. Um, uh, Nathan's playing first. Uh, I believe Nam's playing second. Then me and then Josh. Yep. We got four games back to back tonight, basically. Yep, it's a pretty standard armor suite here that we see from everybody. Um, the stalagmite against Viserai is a pretty typical choice to try to break up the combo because uh, Viserai usually chooses to go for the OTK strategy. Um, but Viserai is a deck that you play what you're given, so uh, we could see some variety in the beginning of the game here before Nathan tries to set up. Um, also, Nathan's holding his breath here on turn one because obviously Starbo's getting to go first. And uh, if he fuses turn one, Nathan could start the game at a lower life total than 40. So that would be less than ideal. Seems like there's no fuse here. This would have already been revealed. Yep. And well, that's as good Dodge as it gets. Bullet number one. Dodge bullet Arsenal number one. Arsenal pass. So why is uh, Stalagmite considered a good choice against OTK Viscerai? Uh, because it breaks up the combo. So uh, Rampart's typically good against decks that attack you throughout the game, um, whereas Stalagmite um, can punish the combo if they don't get a blue um, uh, off of the uh, turn one Sonata or the the big Sonata play. Um, hmm. So it's just a little, a net, just an extra percentage or two points um, that you have against the combo. Um, whereas a Rampart's not doing anything but blocking damage, which you're not you don't really care about, because if they have enough to kill you, they have enough to kill you. Um, but if you can disrupt their combo, then uh, it turns out to be um, mm -hmm. much, much more powerful. And then also you can... Um, you, generally, a Starvo, actually, I would say more than 50% of the time, I'd say probably 70 to 80% of the time, actually survives the combo. Um, mm -hmm. And then the extra block on the stalagmite, since they never break the chain during the actual combo itself, you'll have the stalagmite left over for afterwards. Um, and the stalagmite is very, very crucial for shutting down uh, a Rattlebones play uh, mm -hmm. after the combo. Um, because if Starvo can keep an arsenal after the combo, it is very difficult for Viscerai to push much damage through. So we see a Swarm and Gloomvale here. This suggest to me that uh he's not going for a combo or oh he definitely will be uh, al almost certainly um he he's just play like like i was saying in the beginning you just play what you're given with this deck so mm -hmm. you'll see this pitch of the rattle bones to the bottom of the deck for late game um since he's already shuffled his right deck he, he didn't get them he didn't get the mulligan so that okay that makes yeah, sense okay. exactly exactly and you don't um, want the sword and Goon Flail in the arsenal okay that makes exactly sense. exactly mm -hmm. So when you're given these attacks, they just become blocks. Um, but you'd rather just have the swarming of the bin at this point mm -hmm. um, and try to get a few damage points through because his opponent's now at 39 because he took a damage off of the Sonata Arcane, mm -hmm. um, which is actually very good for Nathan because that's one less rune chant he's going to have to have to kill his opponent. So this feels like a, fu a fuse with something from Arsenal, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Okay. I, mean, I, I, would, I would say you're probably correct. Oh, no. It looks like Crown of Seeds here. Gonna have the one floating. He's probably gonna pitch the blizzard and uh, attack with something from hand here. Yeah. There you go. All right. So Very we have a choice to get rid of candle hold because candle hold is the most powerful uh, of the pulses to hold in hand since your ice count is typically the highest in the deck. Mm -hmm. So fuse crippling for thirteen. Looks like Nathan's gonna block three and just take the ten here. Yep. Lose two cards at random. This could be a time walk here, basically, right? Oh, definitely. Um, the fact that Nathan blocked with a non-attack action means that his hand was probably quite good, which it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so 
So if he if he blocks with a non-attack action there, that means there's nothing in his hand that he probably cared to keep. Because um, mm -hmm. the three yeah. extra damage sometimes is pretty irrelevant if you want to try to keep like a Mordred Tide that you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. You might just want to give him give yourself the best odds to keep it. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact that he's arsenaling a card, his hand was probably four non-attack actions. Mm -hmm. The he uh, had to discard Oath of the uh, Arc Knight. He blocked I'm guessing... with the Oath. He blocked with the Oath. Uh, oh, you mean the be become be the Arc Knight? Become, become oh, yeah, the Arc Knight. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're all good. Yeah. So that's a very I powerful guess card. that's I guess that's ideally what he would have wanted in Arsenal. Yes. There's not too many other cards at this point that you would want in Arsenal. Yeah, sometimes you save a Mordred or something for like a, a, a bigger play. Um, but he's also running the Creepers instead of the Sweet Hides, so mm -hmm. he could um, he could he could also Arsenal uh, any of the non-attack actions. Honestly, when he's getting towards that combo turn, um, mm -hmm. just so that he makes sure that he has the guaranteed go again for combo. Mm -hmm. uh, Teddy in chat. Um, Nathan is on Viscerai uh, for the card guys, and Sam is on Bravo for Fab Foundry. Blocking this with is, the ninth blade here. This is the very first game of oh, tonight. Okay. We have we have a couple more games. Yes, we'll have tonight. three more after this. Here's a very interesting block for you, Josh. Um, uh, ninth blade he, blocking. He actually, took some damage there to keep a three card hand. So. We might, we're definitely going to see some some fun cards here. There's okay. uh, two rune chants for the turn, one off the incantation, one off of this. Um, I'm assuming he's going to have something else to follow this up. He... Either read the runes or something. Yeah, read the runes for three more. And then putting something very, very important into Arsenal. Yes, I'm almost guaranteed to be a Sonata or a Become the Arc Knight at this point. Mm -hmm. Because if it, it's not Mordred Tide, because he obviously would have played it there. Um, yeah. So being at 11 rune chance and 25 life, um, he doesn't need... Well, actually, technically, he's basically at 12 rune chance with the incantation. Mm -hmm. um, so he just needs he's... maybe four more? Um, with Starva, you got to get a little bit higher um, if you really want to try to kill him. Uh, 18 to 20 is typically where you want to mm -hmm. be. Um, if you have a Mordred Tide, you can, you can go around 14, 15, something like that. Seven here, another crippling crush. Yep, yep, a dominated one at that. <clears throat> now, Nathan still has all of his armor, so he's in a not a terrible spot at the moment, I would say. Um, he's above 10 rune chance, which is always where you want to be. I'm I, I feel like you generally don't want to block until it's time to go, yes, because um, of the uh, exposed to the elements. Not, not and... just the exposed to the elements, right? You want to you. You, if you like, you have a hand that you have to save um, because you know you need to go off. Your armor oh. is extremely crucial. Oh, there we go. That's yeah. That's what he wanted to. See. That's that's how you stop that. That's what he wanted to see. For that's sure. eleven block there against thirteen taking two. Yep. He pitched to become the Arc Knight. Um, so we were wrong about the Arsenal. I wasn't sure if Nathan was playing the Undoables. Um, this is yeah. This is great. 15 yep. rune chance, so he's already in that threat range. And he arsenal the card, so he has another non-attack or defense reaction. Mm -hmm. But he's probably going to try to wait until he gets to 18 to 20 to go off, if he can. Sometimes you just have to go, <laughs> or else you die. Yep. I think he's got a couple turns here. Definitely. Even if this is fused here, which... It looks like it's not. Winter's Light, interesting. You typically don't want to make the Visceride discard right now at this point when they are getting ready to combo. Um, if you think they're getting close, you want them to have as few op few opportunities to get to the Sonata as possible. So you typically don't want to make them discard at this moment in the game. Mm -hmm. um, right now would be a fantastic time for like Channel Lake Frigid. Oh, that's oh, pretty the good. Oak and old fuse. This is going to be so, easily blocked if that's a defense reaction in his arsenal. So he did not have um, a lightning card. Correct. So he couldn't reveal. Right. 
So this does not have go again. This is a nine dominate. Nine dominate. So this can be blocked with armor pretty easily here. Yes, it'd be easily blocked if Nathan wants to keep his hand, but with his life total being as high as it is, he might not care at this point. Because if he doesn't have Sonata or a way to get to it right now, the Okanold is just helping him get there. Mm -hmm. So you think right. he might just block three, just lose the cards and move and keep on. And, and keep his armor if he doesn't want mm -hmm. a hand. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. You'd rather be on uh, 17 with all your armor than 23 with half your armor busted up. Absolutely. Especially crucial when you uh, when you draw the hand that you know you want to go off with mm -hmm. and you still have all your armor left, then you can stop that like really well-timed crippling or that really well-timed Okanold or something mm -hmm. um, to, to get there. You'll be very thankful you have the armor. Oh, we see a block from Shrill. Looks like he's going to take the rest, lose the last two cards in his hand like we were talking about. They're going to go to the bottom of the deck. And I'm just going to assume Nathan's going to pass up here. Did we see what uh, what he fused that with? Do we know? I'm sure we did. I just didn't pay it attention. It was, uh, I think it was Blizzard, but I'm not exactly sure. It was okay. an ice. It was... Oh, was Actually, it the pulse? I, it was a pulse, wasn't it? It was a pulse. It had to be a pulse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, so he probably he, kept the pulse yeah. arsenal, the other card that we don't know. Yep. Um, very likely he fuses again this next turn. Yep, so he gets three, four looks at a, a electric card here. Yeah. He already has it. Okay. Yep, got a blink. So now does he have an impactful attack? We've gone through two cripplings and one Oakenold, is that right? Uh, I believe so. Half of the impactful cards are gone. Polar Blast getting extra dominate here. <laughs> yep. Let's draw a card. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. The Polar Blast was something I was Look, tinkering it with. with it, Arvo. Mm -hmm. I like, I looks, like the card. It's, it looks like he doesn't have an attack here. That would be really rough if he doesn't have a good attack. He would have he would have played it yeah the channel lake is the next best thing though is it oh absolutely when your opponent's at 15, uh, yeah, when you have chance. two of them yeah when you have two of them yeah that makes sense. okay i mean this is a doesn't this just allow him to get one yeah. extra turn of rune chan generation Pretty much. Pretty much. And now, attacking, I mean, I... attacking with the hammer here always feels terrible from the Starvo side, because it's so obviously so easy to block, right? So Nathan can just be like, oh, okay, if I'm keeping this hand, it's like, okay, here's four armor, I'm gonna go off. Or he can be like, oh, I don't want to keep this hand. Here's my entire hand, and I'll just draw a new hand and try to get a better hand. <laughs> so he he gets kind of the pick of the bunch of what he wants to keep here. Um, Who's going to get a frostbite? Electing to take one here, which is real interesting. So he must have some good rune chant generation. Probably keeping a blue plus, I don't know, some read the runes or something. Um, if Sam can keep that channel like around the next turn, that's going to be very impactful. Uh -huh. But Nathan having his armor still, uh, Sam's still got his work cut out for him. I have had a Viscerai combo through a channel like Frigid one time, mm -hmm. um, and it never feels good for them. Very, very difficult. Yep. They're basically getting taxed probably five, six yep. uh, during the whole turn. So. Another another important fact um, when you're trying to combo as Viscerai is to watch your opponent's tunic. Um, mm -hmm. If you try to combo in the turn when they have a tunic on three, you're just mm -hmm. making your job harder. Um, if they choose to keep the tunic on three and wait for your combo, Nathan just can be a, there. can be a smart play. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Why did he take a damage if he's passing? He he must need the other three cards. Hmm. Interesting. 
just gonna wait for the channel like frigid to go away i'm assuming okay this is actually good that sam's using his tunic counter now um mm -hmm. that means that he can just block out this turn and if he has the combo he can just go um as long as he doesn't get the second ice card the shock striker we have a meaningful attack it's just a damage based attack nathan doesn't care at all yep nine yep, dominate this... evergreen yep this and is... he has no way to put two ice cards in the bin i don't believe mm -hmm. you can active i guess you can technically activate uh Raider Fist, but that would be worth it for sure. Movable? Yeah. Okay. Keeping uh, one of those go again cards in his deck, that Rune Flash is going to go to the bottom, which is nice for late game. Mm -hmm. mm. The interesting port part of the game here. Um, with Nathan's life being at 15 now, he's under the pr he's under the pressure now. He's seen two of the movable. Um, he definitely wants to wants to plow through as many of those defense reactions before he gets to the combo. Uh, they they can ruin the combo pretty pretty badly. Mm -hmm. so getting two of those unmovables out is quite good. I we haven't seen a reduce to run chant. Do we know if he's playing reduce? I'm not sure, but if he hasn't played it in the first third of his deck, uh, there's a decent chance that he is uh, not playing it. Yeah. If he, I mean, I mean, first. does does reduce to rune chant actually do anything that you want it to do? Like it, it stops the hammer frostbite and produces a rune chant, so it's actually really good in this matchup. But um, if you're opting to go for the unmovables, mm -hmm. it can be it can be really rough because you're playing six defense reactions at that point. So right. um, he could have shaved down the number that he's playing. That's always always I guess a possibility. Mm -hmm. There's the yellow autumn's touch that I keep seeing in these Starvo's deck Starvo decks. I'm not sure how I feel about that card. It's obviously performing well. Another yellow autumn's touch here. I guess that one's going to come in for eight mm -hmm. dominate. Also got a blizzard for the arsenal for combo, which um, Nathan has to be aware of. Yep. Blizzard plus stalagmite represents a moderate amount of uh, disruption. Yes. It would be preferable if he can go off before that tunic gets back to three. Mm -hmm. His life being up 14 now, and he's used two of the unmovables. He doesn't have too he, much longer to wait. He hasn't generated any rune chance in quite a while. Yeah, he has been like three turns, I think. Oof, there's a third unmovable, which is, this is actually good right now. Um, you're just putting yourself at risk now that the unmovables are gone. Um, if Sam draws a really impactful, um, oh, that last card in his hand must be quite good if he's getting rid of a rattle bones. Mm -hmm. if, Sa if Sam draws a really impactful hand here, his tunic's going to go up to two. He's going to have to wait a turn again to go uh, come back around. This could be a really, this is a really important hand for Sam. Teddy Glocks. I think that's Chase. Big pimp, big pimp and Dory simpin. <laughs> Thanks for the ten dollars. <laughs> Josh will appreciate that one. Oh yeah, here's your here's your impactful it's, turn I was talking about. There's there's no shame simpin for Dory. Here, here's, the, here's the impactful turn, Josh. All right, so Oak and Old here coming across for uh, eleven. eleven here. So this this is, this is rough. This is a. I mean, you need you need the spellbound creepers on your combo turn, right? So you can't uh, absolutely. And that has a 
blade break, right? So you, yes, you ideally, he basically has six here. So he's going to take a chunk of damage this turn. Ooh, throwing the, all the armor in front of it. Let's see, three, Some of the four, armor five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, he is playing the oh. reduced. Okay. So he is playing the reduced. So that means he's got two defense reactions left in his deck. Um, he's got the oh. other reduce. Oh. Oh, Fuck. that that was very well timed reduce to rune chance. Yep. And now he can afford to wait another turn because, I mean, there's almost zero chance that he draws Oak and Oh, here. hello. Yeah. There's, um, yeah. This is, what, six rune chance going up to 23? Yep. Uh, so now just... he just needs a Sonata in hand and he's good. Yep. He still has one, two, three, four, four armor block left. Um, and it looks like Sam probably does not have uh, a solid solid play here if it's any sort of just damage card um then the nathan did is he... going to be timed very very perfectly did, did he I, miss his I think he, i think he did i think he did i was just thinking about that yeah just the spinal crush here okay we so just nine... need to block six of this yep one card so... plus some armor block should do uh if he has sonata yep exactly Put the skull cap and the blood sheath in front of if, it. If not, this will probably be a three card block. Put the most important thing into Arsenal. Yep. Preserve the armor because he yep. has enough rune chance already. Absolutely. This is the part where Sam starts to uh, starts to shake. <laughs> like not knowing what's coming. All right, he must he must uh... have combo. He's he's got armor block here. That's yeah. you, we're we're going off. It's time. He did block with a blue. Do you think that is gonna no, matter here? He, he, no, he's he's almost certainly got two blues. <clears throat> and with twenty three rune chance, he's gonna find more. And he pops a lot of. Here we go. Yep. Here we go. So do you think because he's at an odd number of rune chance, do you think he's gonna pay to boost us to? Uh, let's 24 see, reduction. 11, 14 cards revealed. 14 is a very good even number, so probably it not. Could, it could be 15 if he pitches one. Right, but the fact that he blocked with that blue means he doesn't want to risk losing more resources if he doesn't have okay. to. All right, here we go. Well, Flipping well, there's, 14. There's a nice blade that he accidentally showed us, so that's the best card that you can reveal off the top. Yep. So we're already at 32 damage here. Yep. <laughs> 33 minimum actually. As long as, long as he has a uh, non-attack action card in his hand. Oh, there's a D-react. That's the last one left in his deck though, so we're, we're in the clear after that. Come on, we need some attacks here. We need some attacks here. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Not too Dread, bad. Tri Dread trip to uh, okay, that's, that, that's pretty good. Um... That's six attacks. Would have liked to have seen a swarming in there. Um, the zero costs against the stalagmite are the optimal. But he drew uh, he drew two blues here. He's yeah. totally fine here. Yep, as long as he has that non-attack action in his hand, then we are golden. If it's a Mavrin's guys, it's even better. Mm -hmm. So six arcane coming across here. Yep. Six arcane, if he takes it, it'll put him down to 33, and then he can basically present lethal off the ninth blade. <laughs> Looks like he's gonna take three of it. Uh, five oh, of it. Oh no, oh, five of it. Sorry. Five, five of it. Yeah. My bad. No, you're good. I was playing Icelander yesterday, and I was like, "Yeah, I have all the AB." <laughs> 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 all right. So let's see how Sam Nine decides plus to deal with twenty-three. Yeah. Pretty good. One in the back. Yep. Ready to go. He's got. E strike, um, meet and greet, meet, meet and greet, dread triptych, Ow. and there was one more go again. Rune flash, rune flash, I believe, was the other go again. So there's at least 50 damage coming this turn. Okay, he's blocking one of that, taking 22. Hold on, he's blocking. One, oh, is he keeping one for crown? Mm hmm. Um, if he has any other two 
two block cards in his hand that are blue, like Evergreen, that... he needs to was... pitch those for rune enchant damage. Was he at 30? He was at 34. He was at, so... he was at 39, yeah, okay. took 5 to 34, yeah. Yep, yeah. okay. So he's at 12 now. <clears throat> Still have to contend with 9 physical damage here. Yep. I... We'll almost certainly see him throw the Crater Fist at this, right? Because then he'll be able to block uh, the second time? No. We'll almost certainly see him take most of this damage. Um, I mean, if he throws the Shield and the Crater Fist, they can block again. Because the combat chain will be well, broken. Well, cre Creepers makes it instant. But it... Are you sure that playing a non-attack action at instant speed doesn't break the combat chain? I believe it does not. Huh. Okay. You see, these are things that I never get to do, so you know, I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> because, because, because I believe it words it as you play your next non-attack action as though it were an instant. Okay. Um. So I don't believe it actually reads as a non-attack action card to break the chain. But mm. I'm happy to be wrong here if somebody wants to correct me. But just room blade things. <laughs> so it looks uh -huh. like he activated Crown of Seeds there. And yep, so Crown now of seeds, what? <laughs> yeah, Crown of Seeds. The weird thing here for me is so when I'm playing Starvo into Viscerai, you have this you have this okay, so you're looking at your hand, right? Any of the two block three costed cards, as in like mm -hmm. a blue two block like Evergreen. Those are all being ditched for rune chance, um, unless you have. So you have to you have to keep in, keep in mind what your opponent drew, right? Any of the hit effects, so the meet and greet, dread triptych, those sorts of things. You have to keep in mind how many go again hit effect cards they have in their hand. So I need to be able to block all of those because you cannot let them generate more rune chance than obviously. Like you have to prevent as much damage as possible to survive. Um, so, so we, we, we saw of, meet and greet, East meet, Strike, Rune meet Flash. And greet, yeah, so he doesn't really have that many hit effects that we know of. He had two mm. unknown cards in his hand when he started the combo. Um, I'm going to assume one of them is a non-attack action card and the other is whatever it is. Mm. Um, and so the meet and greet needs to eat a block. Uh, I would almost certainly put Crater Fist and Stalagmite in front of the meet and greet. <laughs> um, if he has a blue card here, that's why I wouldn't put the Stalagmite in front of the ninth blade because you need to let it block something that has a hit effect mm -hmm. but we're at a weird point now where the ninth blade is preventing presenting almost enough damage to where sam is just going to die regardless if that makes sense because of the rune chant damage so yeah so here's the non-attack action um playing the rune blood incantation which is also going to generate a rune chant on the back side which looks like nathan might be missing it should be at three not two that's, yeah, that's right Mm -hmm. um, okay, nope. so Nathan's he, not going to he, miss that. Okay, good. <clears throat> um, so that eats two resources, which is, and uh, also another important thing is Nathan wants to play out the non-hit effect cards first, especially yep. while his opponent's this low. Um, yep. Eat as much of that block as possible. Get the get the most uh, out of the hit effects. All right, so here come the three. The, the three costed two blocks they're eating rune chance mm -hmm. now they're blocking for three instead of two yep and we've got four he, physical damage here I which mean, he, is lethal he essentially has like 15 16 health right now I don't see how he lives here uh, he's not living even if he does live, he's not going to live past that because he won't have an arsenal and anything that Nathan draws is going to keep him pretty much out of the game. Mm -hmm. I believe Nathan also has either one or two rattle bones left in the deck. I think he blocked with one of them. Mm -hmm. Those are the most important card for finishing uh, finishing your opponent off. But I, with an E-Strike for seven to finish this with that many cards in hand, there's just no way he's surviving. Or an E-Strike for five into Rosetta Thorn. I, I, I can't see how he lives through this. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Walking for five here. For four. 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 Yeah, you East strike drag. five, go again. Yep. This is probably going to eat stalagmite plus whatever. And then he's just going to die after that. Because he's still got a, a meet and greet and a Rosetta Thorn coming after that. Which is going to present, you know, like nine damage or something like that. When he has mm -hmm. two cards in hand and stalagmite. And he's got a, he's basing down six damage right now. We can eat the last rune chant with uh, so the one floating. The, the best possible situation here for him is that's meet and greet plus a red in hand. Yes. And the stalagmite will. Yes, and the stalagmite will here. actually do its work. But mm -hmm. I know for a fact it is not. It's a dread triptych in his hand. Yeah. So it, there's no way for, for Sam to live here, I don't believe, unless his hand is. I don't know. Blizzard and I know that won't even do it. I, I really don't know what Sam's hand could be here to to live. Mm -hmm. Still thinking about this five damage coming at him. Uh, being at four, you can put a three block in front of it and live, but you will die to Rosetta Thorn after that. Um, the tunic is almost for sure going to come in. Uh, if he has three blocks in hand right now, uh, I would put one of the three blocks um, plus the stalagmite in front of this, and then the other three block plus tunic in front of the meet and greet. Um, and then I believe you die to the Rosetta Thorn, but that yep. seems to be about the most optimal line of block that you can do. Uh, if you have two three blocks plus stalagmite plus tunic. Mm -hmm. So given that the most optimal blocks in his hand are still going to be I honestly don't know what he would need to live here. Yeah, Chase, he put the, the Runeblood Incantation on a really weird spot on the board because he knows that his line of <laughs> attacking is going to go all the way across his mat. So he's going to have two floating here, which is just enough uh, to get around the stalagmite. And now he dies. Good game. GG. Minus GG. one. GG. <clears throat> yeah, 23 so we... chance is almost impossible to stop if they hit anywhere near a perfect split. Yep. So we saw Viscerai kill from 39 with fresh armor on the Starvo side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, so so Star Starvo always has the fresh armor suite for, for the combo, but it almost doesn't... <laughs> it almost doesn't matter most of the time. Yep. Your opponent has to not hit very well on the combo for you to have a chance at 23 rune chance. Yep. I think he could have survived maybe three or four cards, but not six cards. Mm-hmm. Good game, GG. So, yep. Best Viscerai player NA takes the victory here, 1 0. Um, all right, so we have a, another match coming up very soon. It'll be yep. Nom against Justin. Yep. We will set that up right now if we can. Yep. I'll go and... ahead and uh, give him a message and see if we can get him in here. Yep. And maybe, uh, maybe Nathan would be happy to join us for a quick chat about his game. Chat, I hope you guys enjoyed that game. That was a very excellent display of what this matchup looks like. Uh, yeah, the Starvo, a... Starvo missed, oh. what, three times, I think, during that game? Yep, that um, was a very by-the-book game, but yep. it's that's yep. a very excellent game to study if you were, if you're playing either one of those heroes to figure out, right. you know, what things look like on both sides. Right. You also know, like... You know, even from the Starvo side, right? You, we we lost Starvo lost that game, but it's very easy to look at a game like that and be like, "Oh, I know exactly what happened." But if you actually look closely, more closely at the game, 
Um, I think there were a key, some key decisions that Sam might have made that, you know, he maybe he could have changed a couple of things. Like, like he ditched that pulse really, really early. Um, mm -hmm. And that is the most important pulse you can keep in your hand for this matchup. Um, maybe that would have allowed him to fuse maybe just a little bit more. He also wait, he also used the pulse of Volthaven into a hammer really early in the game, um, which is another pretty inefficient use of pulse against Viserai who can just block out and then dig for better cards. Mm -hmm. um, I've even had times against Viserai with uh, Bravo where I just arsenal passed without attacking with the hammer uh, because I knew their hand was mostly attacks or I knew that they had just drawn a fresh hand and pressuring that fresh hand sometimes is not correct. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit a bit of a risk, but it's also a bit of a risk to attack. So you can look at it in different ways and try to assess like how you played and what might have gone differently if you had done done something else. But if you get a viscerai on on a four attack hand, they really can't do a whole lot. So you can just kind of wait around until you draw a really nice fuse hand and hit him hit him hit him in the face with it. Makes sense. Like that winner's bite. Remember when I was talking about that winner's bite? He didn't have a good hand there. He wanted to get rid of his hand on that winner's bite turn. That's one yeah. more card that he could he might not have seen. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, Nam has joined the game. So yep, we're just going to wait on his opponent. Oh, Nathan's in here. Hey, Nathan. GG. What up, what up, what up? GG, GG. We did it. A very by-the-book victory there, but impressive nonetheless no so that uh that, that polar was blast. book <laughs> okay <laughs> Let, let's let's talk about that polar blast i made right, a mistake let's talk about it let's talk about it yeah so he he uh he played the polar blast and i had an unmovable in arsenal an unmovable in hand and three red attacks uh-huh and i gave him the dominate but i gave yeah, him the he dominate already had, he already had dominate didn't he yeah correct he had, he had double dominate yeah, so, but then he hammered, which the Bravo didn't apply to, and that's why I blocked with one attack and then literally just ended my turn and drew one card. Yeah, we we uh, thought, oh, you must really love those yeah, three cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, it was no, the opposite. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I guess it worked. I mean, reading reading the card explains the card, as they say. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Well, we got there. We got there. Uh, you, did, you did get there. Oh, any was... strategy or tactics you want to talk about that you utilized during that game? Uh, yeah. So me, me and Sam have played uh, quite a few times. Um, it's he plays more, the the faster version. Uh, I guess if you want to call it the casino version. Um, so a lot of it is a lot more predictable. All right. So you're not like looking over your shoulder for like mangles and pommels and, and things like yeah. that, which allows Visra to play in a way to all I have to really calculate is the frostbite on the hammer Yep. and be able to play off of that and say, okay, you know what, take the damage there's, or not. There's less mental tax. Right, right. I'm, I'm kind of playing my own game and just he's inconveniencing me by throwing dominated Okanolds at me. And um, yep. that's, which, you know, which, which you have something called a life pool for, so you know that. Yeah, we we, we definitely used <laughs> that. <laughs> Taking ten on that what first turn or whatever, or his yeah. first real turn. Yeah, you like, blocked three on that crippling. Yep, I, I had my hand was two blue oath of the arc knights, a become the arc knight, and a Mavrian. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, this is doo doo. <laughs> yeah. when, when you blocked with the oath, I actually told Josh, I was like, I bet his hand is four non attack actions right now. Like, the, yep. the, the only reason that you would block with a blue oath there is that your hand was three more non attack actions. And, and um, that that was actually a, a good, that's a good point to bring that up. If there's any Visra players watching or anything, one thing that scared me at the beginning, right? Because I had that really good first turn. Where I played the Sonata and I did the, I pitched the rattle, but I had four non-attacks in my hand, and I got the swarming off the Sonata. Right. And then the the immediate next turn, I drew four non-attacks. So that's eight non-attacks. Yep. 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 And one attack. So my ratio at the beginning of the game was horrendous. So therefore, yep. 
it was at after I took the 10 on the crippling crush, I was like, number one priority is to long the game to yep. even out the ratio, get the D yep. reacts out, and give me a chance to get those attack cans. I saw you pitch a rattle bones and a blue yep. become the arc knight or something like that. Yep. I think it was another non attack action blue card. Uh, the uh, whisper of the oracle whisper, to even out whisper. the ratio. That's yep, right. To yep. Even out the ratio, and yep. and that was really important to do that because if you don't do that and you get greedy and that's why it ended up hitting at the end was i counted the graveyard everything was was i think i was plus one on attacks and yep. uh, yeah it worked out mm -hmm.